to share our family story of our daughter's diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. Um, she was diagnosed on April 26, 2015, and um, it was a pretty um, traumatic experience to say the least. Um, the days leading up to that day, I noticed that Lily was not herself. She um, acted as if she had the flu. She um, wasn't really eating much, but complained that she was really hungry. She was constantly drinking. She was so thirsty. She would down a whole bottle of water uh, and then a couple minutes later say that she wanted some milk and drink the whole glass of milk and then say she wanted some juice. Um, and um, she was also urinating a lot. She um, had been potty trained already and was uh, constantly using the restroom um, every 20, 30 minutes. We couldn't go from our house to um, a store without her saying that she had to use the restroom again. Um, I also noticed that she was wetting the bed again and um, she was back in pull-ups and she was soaking through the pull-ups and getting up multiple times during the night and having to go to the restroom. Um, the other thing that I noticed is um, she was very lethargic. She just really was not herself. She would tell me, mommy, I need quiet time. And coming from an almost four-year-old at that time, um, it was very odd. And um, I noticed that she was looking a little purple. Um, her skin, um, if you were to um, like pinch it up, uh, it would um, it would leave a white mark. Like you, it looked like she was not getting any circulation. And later we found out she did have um, pneumonia in one of her lungs, um, on top of her diagnosis of uh, type one diabetes. So. Um, that morning, um, my husband had flown home from work, and um, actually the day that he flew home, I had mentioned, hey, you know, Lily's not feeling very well. Um, I don't know if it's the flu. I'm getting really concerned. And we both just kind of wrote it off as, you know, maybe she has the flu. You know, maybe she's sick, and that's why she's acting this way. And so as the weekend progressed, um, my husband and I noticed that there was something a little more going on here. Um, the night before we actually took her in, her breathing became very labored and um, it was to the point where she, her nostrils were flaring um, as she was trying to get oxygen in and um, she um, just did not seem right. That following morning, um, she could barely even keep her eyes open. Um, her eyes were rolling back in her head. Um, she couldn't even lift her pillow up to adjust herself. And um, at that time, I explained to my husband that, you know, she's really exhibiting symptoms of possibly type 1 diabetes. Thankfully, uh, when we first moved out to our, our new home, um, I joined a mommy's group and uh, another mother. Um, had suggested maybe getting her checked for that when I listed her symptoms and saying, hey, you know, is anybody else's kids having this real, really weird, funky flu? And um, I am forever grateful for that mom for um, even putting that suggestion out there um, for me to, to look into type 1 diabetes. So that morning um, I told my husband, hey, look, she showing, is showing about 90% of the symptoms for type 1 diabetes and um, he was a little frustrated. It was more of like, fine, we'll take her to the emergency room and see what's going on, but I'm sure it's just the flu. And, you know, um, but he too was a little worried. And um, so he actually took her to the emergency room um, right down the street. And I had stayed home with our, um, our son because he was actually, he was sick. He had a cold and coughing and we just really didn't need to bring all that to the emergency room too. So I made a list um, for my husband of all the symptoms that she was having to be sure to tell the um, admitting nurse, like, look, you know, this is what's been going on with her. And um, he had been gone for maybe about 15 minutes and I get a phone call 
and the phone call was, you need to get down here right away. Um, they're sending her to the children's hospital and um, it looks like she does have type 1 diabetes. I, um, I lost it. I locked myself in the bathroom and I just cried and I begged God to not let this happen to her, you know, let me have these, um, let me have this disease, let me do this for her, you know, she was three years old turning four and she didn't need this to be her new life. Excuse me, I'm sorry that I'm crying, I really tried to tell myself I wouldn't do this with, you know, do this if I was going to cry. But, um, so of course, because my husband told me to get down right away, I pulled myself together. And me and my son drove down to the hospital as quickly as we could. And by that, by that time, they were already um, uh, getting her ready to transfer out to the children's hospital, which was about maybe 20 minutes away. So they were going to be taking her by ambulance. And when I got there, she wasn't really responsive. She um, she was sleeping when we did try to wake her, when I let her know that mommy was here, she wouldn't move. Um, and the nurse explained to me, you know, we are still waiting for the test, but she had a nine or she has a nine year old daughter who is type one. And she said, I'm really sorry. And I know this is going to be hard for you, but, um, it does look like she has type one diabetes and it does look like she is in DKA, which is di uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. And, um, I just remember her handing me a box of tissues and telling me it's okay. It's okay. You can cry. I know this is hard for you. And from that point on, it was a whirlwind. I remember um, having my husband sit in the room with her while I went outside and called some family members because my husband was going to be leaving in um, the next day or two to go back to work. And how am I supposed to deal with this all on my own? We're being told that she is basically slipping into a diabetic coma. And we are going to be having to stay about three or four days at the hospital, at Children's Hospital. And um, so I called, um, I called my mom and I called my dad and I called my sister and I just remember crying and crying. It was so upset. I remember so upset to the point when I was talking to my dad, he was like, I can't understand you. You need to calm down. <laughs> so... Um, it made it hard too because we had our son with us and he couldn't really go with us in the emergency room you know and we needed to really take care of him too because he wasn't feeling very well so um, my husband decided to stay back with our son and I rode in the ambulance um, with our daughter over to um, Summerlin Children's Hospital here in Las Vegas and um, I felt like it was the longest ride ever. I couldn't sit in the back of the ambulance with her. And I remember the paramedic at one point saying, and her, you know, everybody knows her name is Bobby Lillian Boone. So she was saying, Bobby, 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 come on, I need you to talk to me. And that freaked me out. I thought, oh my God, what's wrong? And I can't be back there with her. And so anyway, we got to the hospital and uh, my husband was meeting us over there. So when we got to the hospital um, and up into her room, it was like an immediate rush of nurses and doctors and hooking her up and trying to get blood and she was still not responsive. She wasn't, she maybe would say, you know, ow or, you know, she'd cry for me or cry for my husband. But, um, it was not my baby girl, and it was really hard to watch that. And so when my husband got there, I know that we both kind of had a little breakdown moment. Um, I've never been so scared in my life. 
And I just kept praying, God, please, please. And at this point, we still didn't even have a confirmation that this is really what was going on, that she really was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And um, I've seen my husband cry maybe two other times in the whole time that I've known him. And this was probably the most upset I've ever seen him because we couldn't do anything for her at that time. So, I remember the doctor coming in, and she was in um, children's ICU, and I remember the doctor coming in and explaining to us, you know, what we needed to do to take care of her, and at that point I said, you know, is she being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes? And she said, yes. Um, Lily's blood sugar level was, I believe, 380 something and then spiked to 480 something in the time that she was um, admitted to the emergency room at the Springfield Hospital, hospital and then um, to the time that she was transferred over to um, Summerlin. But um, we didn't quite understand like what was going on with her, and the doctor did say, you know, basically she. Um, her blood sugar has probably been high for so long that um, it has put her into uh, ketone acidosis and um, basically she, if we would not have done anything, she would have slipped into a full-blown diabetic coma. And she did use the words that she is um, basically having a diabetic coma. She was not responsive, her body started to shut down. Um, she explained to me that her blood was thick like syrup and that the um, lack of ability to absorb the sugars that were in her body uh, affected the um, acids in her muscles to be released and um, basically her body was failing. And um, it was, it was a whirlwind. It was a crazy, crazy whirlwind to think like this is not, this is not happening. You know, it was definitely one of those okay, I can wake up now moments. So, um, they basically explained that uh, they needed to start administering um, insulin. And they needed to do it slowly as to not cause like any uh, brain issues or brain damage or hemorrhaging and they needed to do it in a safe manner so that we would be there for a couple days and also um, during that time we would have to learn how to take care of her and uh, basically be her life support uh, making sure that her blood sugar is at a safe range and that um, we administer insulin daily um, to keep her in that safe range. And um, my husband stayed with her the first night because I obviously, being a stay-at-home mom, would be the one to take care of her. Um, I would be her caregiver. And so um, the endocrinologist who came in um, is Dr. Dewan. He's actually our doctor. And he basically said, you need to go home and you need to get some rest because you're going to have a lot of education tomorrow. So um, Robert stayed at the hospital with Lily. And my mom drove in that night um, to, to stay with us and to help me. And um, I just remember not wanting to leave her. She was hooked up to so many machines. She had so many tubes. And she was, the only thing that she said the entire time she was in um, the children's hospital that first day was twice she said, Daddy, I want to go home. Take me home. And other than that, she wouldn't say anything. She wouldn't move. So um, it was scary having to leave her there that first night. But I knew that her dad would be there for her. And... I really didn't get any sleep that night, <laughs> you know, like any mother would. You know, your child is basically fighting for her life at that time, and, um, you know, I didn't get any sleep. But um, 
The next morning, Robert called and he said, she is doing 100% better. She's our little girl again. And I was through the roof excited. I was so happy. And they told us that. They said, you know what? After 24 hours of, of having this insulin and regulating her blood sugar back to normal, you will see she it's going to be night and day. And it really was. And um, so I remember walking in the hospital that next morning and just seeing, seeing her smile and seeing her cute little face just happy. And the first thing she says is, hi, mom, I missed you. And I was so happy. I was so happy. And um, she was a bit swollen um, from all the fluids they had given her. So she was a little puffy. I my little puffy marshmallow. Um, but uh, she definitely won over all the nurses and the staff there at the hospital, that's for sure. She was a little princess. And everybody just kept commenting how she cute and adorable she was, and her little personality. And um, so that next day I had all of my training and I'm still learning. Um, it's only what three months since her diagnosis. So I'm still learning a lot. Um, it's challenging every single day. Um, we were actually released a day sooner than what we were told because I did so well learning uh, how to take care of her and Lily did so well in improving her health. She's definitely a fighter. And uh, all the special treatment that she got in the children's ward, she told me, Mom, I don't want to leave. <laughs> I don't want to go. And of course, I was ready to go. But um, so that's basically our story. Um, and in retrospect, kind of looking back, even to before the week that I noticed she wasn't feeling very well, um, I noticed there were times where she would say she's really hungry. And then you'd make her food and she wouldn't want to eat. And then she'd be really, like, tired, and she wouldn't want to play. She wouldn't want to run around. And she was starting to pee a lot. And, you know, I thought maybe she has a bladder infection. And we had drove, um, when we were moving um, from California here to um, Las Vegas, and we had to stop so many times because she had to go to the bathroom. And looking back now, it's like, Wow, you know, we could have caught this a lot sooner, but um, we didn't. And it was just because we didn't know. So our goal is to uh, basically help educate those who don't know about type 1 diabetes and the signs and symptoms of what to look for. And we just, and we are so thankful to have our little girl with us still. We are so thankful to still have her in our lives and that everything worked out well. And... Um, there was such an outpour of uh, giving and kindness by all of the um, diabetic community out here in the Las Vegas area. Our Las Vegas chapter of JDRF um, is amazing. Um, we had perfect strangers coming and bringing us supplies that we needed as soon as we got home. We had um, a group of moms uh, of other uh, MODs, moms of diabetics, who put together a birthday party for our daughter because her birthday was a week after her diagnosis and we really, you know, we were still trying to figure out life after her diagnosis, so we didn't plan anything and they threw her a birthday party. So April 26th, 2015 is a day we will always remember and it really changed our lives. So I know this is a long video, um, and I'm sorry that it got emotional. Um, it, it's still, some days it still hits me, you know, and I think that it always will. But I know one day that we will find a cure, and I will not be talking about my daughter with diabetes. I won't be talking about finding a cure for type 1 diabetes. I will have a happy, healthy child that doesn't need shots every day doesn't need to do finger pokes every day and um, I'll be one happy mom so thank you guys for listening and if you guys have any questions um, please feel free to leave comments below and um, thank you